Welcome to the view from North Fulton. I'm District 3 Commissioner Liz Hausman, bringing you some very important news today that affects all Fulton County residents that own vehicles. If you haven't heard yet, the Georgia Legislature passed a new tax collection system for your ad valorem tax, or the birthday tax as it has been referred to by some, for the annual car tag title tax. The old system was phased out and the new system was implemented on March 1, 2013 for those individuals purchasing new cars this year and every year after this. Others may opt in. For example, those that have purchased vehicles from January 1, 2012 through March 1, 2013 are given an opportunity to opt in first. The other element of the phase-in is a percentage increase of the taxes owed over the next three years that will begin at 6.5% and fi finishes at 7%. For many people, this appears a little confusing, so I have asked a special guest to walk us through this process today. With us on our program is the Georgia Department of Revenue Commissioner, Doug McGinnity. The commissioner brings years of experience in the corporate world to his current role at the Georgia Department of Revenue. As Revenue Commissioner, Doug McGinnity oversees the collection of around $16 billion in annual revenue. He is very acquainted with the new system and will be joining us today to help answer our questions and help us all understand what we can expect. And he's also a North Fulton resident. So please stay tuned to get important information about the changes to your ad valorem taxes this year with our very special guest, Revenue Commissioner Doug McGinnity. We are back with Georgia Department of Revenue Commissioner Doug McGinnity. Commissioner McGinnity, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Now we've known each other a long time. Uh, would you share with our viewers a little bit about, about your background? Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. I, I grew up in Dunwoody, uh, just north of Atlanta, and currently live in Sandy Springs, Georgia. Uh, I've been the Revenue Commissioner for about two years. I started with a new governor. Governor Deal when he started in January of 2011, uh, and before that, uh, I had my career was all in the private sector. I helped run a couple insurance brokerage companies, and um, I'm actually a lawyer by training, but don't hold that against me. Uh, and then uh, a few years ago, I decided to get involved in some public service, and I served or got elected and served on the city council in Sandy Springs, uh, and then ran a statewide campaign, and, and that I guess led to this position now at, at the Department of Revenue. Well, we do have in common that we both served on the inaugural city councils in our respective cities, you in Sandy Springs and I in Johns Creek. So I think we have a common bond there. A absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're here today to talk about taxes. Um, there's some changes to the ad valorem tax system taking effect March 1st. Um, what is that? And uh, tell us a little bit about it. So big changes go in effect on March 1st uh, for all folks, uh, all everybody in Georgia who owns a car will ultimately see some change. And it's, it's pretty complex and, and pretty complicated, but we'll walk through the various pieces of it. But before I forget, uh, I'd like to mention we do have a website at the Department of Revenue that helps explain some of this, answers a bunch of frequently asked questions, and helps give some guidance to folks here in Georgia to help understand what's going on. Uh, and that's uh, newtitletax.com. Uh, and again, I encourage all of your viewers to go check out that site um, if they have any questions or have any concerns after they hear some of this. But starting started on March 1, a, a whole new scheme went into effect for how your automobile will be taxed here in Georgia. And it's sort of divided into three groups, but after March 1, whenever you buy a car, and that's from a dealer or from your neighbor down the street or your cousin, you'll pay a one-time 6.5% title transfer tax or title ad valorem tax on the value of the car. Uh, you'll, you'll either pay, the, pay that amount through the dealer if you buy it from the dealer or if you buy it from your neighbor or your cousin in what's called a casual sale, you'll have to pay that 6.5% at the county tag office when you get your new title. Uh, but then you're done. Uh, that birthday tax that everybody's 
used to getting every year uh, to get their little sticker, that ad valorem tax will be gone. Uh, and in its place, you'll just get that once a year annual bill where you have to pay $18 for your sticker, uh, and then that's it. So you'll pay the one and a half, or the one time, six and a half percent title transfer tax at the time you buy the vehicle, and then you're done. No more ad valorem, no more birthday tax. That's the easy part to explain. Uh, the harder part is the old system that was around uh, the, where you got a birthday tax and ad valorem tax every year is still going to apply to every vehicle that you owned before January 1st of 2012. So the old system stays around until you sell that car and so you still get the birthday tax, you'll still get the ad valorem tax that you'll have to write every year. And then there's the third group of folks that makes it particularly complex and that's everybody who bought a vehicle between January 1st of 2012 and the end of February of 2013. So that 14 month period, those folks have a, a decision to make. They can either opt in to the new system or they can stay in the old ad valorem once a year birthday tax system. Uh, and those folks have until the end of December of this year of 2013 to make that decision. So that's very complicated. It gets a little complicated, yes. And I would assume your website would help people um, navigate these changes and understand where exactly they fit in? Absolutely. Uh, again, that, that website is newtitletax.com. Uh, but, you know, the, the biggest change for folks, if, it's easy to sort of divide into groups. If you owned a car on January 1st of 2012, you're in the old system. You don't have to do anything. You're going to keep getting that bill uh, every year, your ad valorem bill every year, uh, until you sell that car. So you really don't have to do anything. Uh, the, the biggest change is for the folks who buy a car after March 1, not from a dealer, because the dealer is going to take care of all the paperwork and, and, and you'll pay the tax through, the, through them. Um, but it's in that casual sale where uh, an individual is buying from their neighbor or their cousin, uh, not through a dealer. And when they want that new title, when they go down to the county tag office to get their new title, they're going to have to write a check for 6.5% of the value of that car. And that's the biggest change that you know, I'd like to make sure your viewers are aware of because that's the one that's going to be the trickiest, I think, for people uh, and, and maybe the most unexpected. Now, does that apply for within a family, for example, if, if you transfer a car to a child that just graduated from college, would that apply? Uh, the answer is yes, it does apply. It applies to uh, every transfer of a title after March 1st is subject to this tax. Now, once, here, and now it gets a little complicated, once you're in the new system, so if you, you have a car and you transfer it to your son, you have to pay the 6.5% of the value of the car when you make that transfer. But after that transfer, when that car is already in the new system, uh, if he wants to transfer it back to you or to his brother or to some other family member, immediate family member, he actually then will pay a much, uh, much more reduced rate uh, for that second transfer. But the first one into the system, yes, uh, they do have to pay the full amount. If he transfers it within a family? Correct. Okay. Correct. Very complicated. Yeah, and, and if, you, uh, if you think about it, what it's, it's sort of getting away from taxing the value of the vehicles you own mm -hmm. to ta taxing every transaction when a vehicle transfers ownership. Um, and, and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, um, we can leave for the policymakers, the folks who wrote the law, but that's, that's kind of the sea change that you're going to see here in Georgia. Okay, so initially it's a 6.5% tax now, but that increases over time, correct? That is correct. It starts at 6.5% of the value of the vehicle in the first year, and then it goes to 6 and 3 quarters the next year and 7%. And then depending on how much revenue the system is generating for the state and for local governments, uh, that 7% that can go all the way up to 9%, uh, but it will depend on uh, the revenue generated by this system uh, in, in, over the next few years. But it definitely goes up to 6 and 3 quarters and then 7% in the next two years. So in a nutshell, if I purchase a new car or a new used car after March 1st, then I will have to pay the, the one-time fee. But if I keep my existing car, then I continue to pay annually as I have in the past. You did a, mu a much better job of summing it up than I did explaining it. Absolutely. Well, now, I think the viewers also need to know that even if you pay the one-time uh, tax, you still have to go every year and get a sticker. That's right. So the, you'll still get an annual. Uh, so if you're in the new system, you buy a car in April of 2013, you pay the one-time 6.5% tax on that. Every year on your birthday, you'll still get that same envelope that requires you to write a check, but this time the check will only be for 18 or $20. Uh, 
uh, and th that, that'll make sure that your registration stays up to date. You'll still get that little sticker that you have mm -hmm, to put on the back mm -hmm. of your car. And in the metro Atlanta area, it's also relevant because that will be the, uh, the choke point to make sure people are still getting their emissions test and still clearing their emissions requirements uh, here in the metro Atlanta area. So no changes to the emission requirements? That is correct. No change to okay, the emission. Okay, another good piece of information. Right. So when you get that bill the next year, don't throw it away. You still got to write the check for $18. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, a lot of people lease cars. Tell us how, how they are affected by this. So uh, leasing uh, uh, vehicles is in some ways exactly the same. Uh, when you sign a lease, the, the title transfers to the leasing company and there'll be a six and a half percent charge on that, on that lease. Uh, my, my guess, I'm sure every leasing company will work that charge into their leasing payments. Probably. Uh, and so it'll just become part of the monthly charge. Now, uh, le car leases also uh, will, will require the collection of sales tax or use tax on the lease payments. But again, those will get factored into the, to the monthly payments. So if you're leasing a car, most of this will be behind the scenes. You won't really see it. It'll just impact your monthly lease payment. Well, there are some uh, housekeeping cleanup changes to the law that I believe are under consideration, and a lot of them have to do with leases. That's one of the significant changes that they're looking at uh, because of this sort of double taxation, both on the transfer of the title of the lease and the sales or use tax on the mm -hmm. lease payments. Uh, the leasing companies have um, argued, and, and maybe appropriately so, that that's a little bit unfair, and they'd like to see some relief on one or both of those. Uh, and there is some legislation pending in the in the uh, Georgia legislature that would look at changing how leases are treated and, and providing them a little bit more favorable tax treatment than they have under the current system. But uh, on March 1, uh, that's the system that, that's going to be in place because that's the law right now. Okay, and then there's another category. Um, if you move into our state from somewhere else, are you subject to this tax, or how, how would you get into our system? Yep, great question. Uh, yes, you are. Uh, and at the department, we've um, jokingly started referring to it as the Welcome to Georgia tax. Uh, when you move here, uh, you're required by law to retitle all of your vehicles in the state to register and title them here. And that same 6.5% of the, of the value of the car will apply. So if you move to Georgia and you have uh, a car that's worth $10,000, when you go to the county tag office, when you come to Fulton County to get your title, uh, they'll ask for a check for, um, well, with one caveat, at, you'll still have to pay that $650, that 6.5% of the value, that $10,000 value, uh, to get your new title here in Georgia. Uh, the one provision they made for folks moving into Georgia is that you're allowed to make that payment over two years. Uh, you have to pay half up front and half, actually really over 13 months, and half a year from when you have that car retitled. So in my example, you'll have to write a check for $325 when you first move here to Georgia and then another check for $325 a year later. And then you're done. And then you're done, subject, of course, to getting that once a year Correct. $18 registration. Correct. Okay, well, that's a lot of information to absorb. Um, we will be back in just a moment to continue our conversation with Revenue Commissioner Doug McGinnity and help hopefully explain to you all of the changes with the ad valorem tax system. We'll be right back. Well, we are back with State Revenue Commissioner Doug McGinnity, and we've been discussing the many changes to our ad valorem tax system. So, we've established that any car that's purchased since March 1st, 2013, will be subject to the new tax system. Got well, that down. You got that, right. Okay. So, does everybody need to rush out if they bought a car in the last year and a half? Does everyone need to rush to their tag office now? to opt in to the new system. Right, so, so uh, no is the short answer to that question. In fact, we would encourage folks not to rush out you know, the, fir the first few weeks of March to um, opt into the new system. Those people who are eligible to opt into the new system. Again, that's folks who bought a car after January 1 of 2012 up until the end of February of 2013. Uh, what we're encouraging people to do is to go to the, if they want to opt in to the new system, is to go to the county tag office or tax office uh, before their birthday, before they get that next ad valorem bill, and, and make the decision then if they want to opt in or not. But you, but everybody does not need to show up to the county tag office in 
March of, uh, of this year. In fact, we're encouraging people not to. You know, there's going to be growing pains with this. It's going to take a little while longer to get transactions done mm -hmm. at the county tag offices. And so in an, in an effort to try to minimize the pain for everybody, we, we definitely encourage people to wait until, they, uh, until their birthday is coming up and then make that decision. And then, then if they want to opt in, go down to the county tag office at that time. So even though um, they purchased the car, the March 1 deadline has come to begin the new system. If they haven't made a decision yet about what they want to do, they have until they would normally pay the birthday tax to decide. Yeah, in fact, uh, that's, that's what we recommend. And in any event, they have until the end of December of this year of 2013 to make that decision. So uh, you don't have to do it at your birthday, but that's what I think makes the most sense for most people. Gotcha. Okay, so if you're buying a car from a dealer, you know you pay the tax at the time of the transaction. But if you're buying from a previous owner, when and where will someone pay that tax? Another, another very good question. So uh, as, as I talk to groups all the time, what I try to make clear is if, if you buy your cars from a dealer, um, they're really going to handle the paperwork just like they handled the paperwork for sales tax mm -hmm. that you used to pay in the past. They're going to do all the work for you. And so you really don't have to worry about it that much. Uh, but when you buy in that casual sale from your neighbor or a person down the street, uh, the way you're going to pay the tax and the way it's going to be handled is you'll have to take down your new, the title. Everybody knows you signed the, you know, the, you had the previous owner sign mm -hmm. the back of the title. You're going to mm -hmm. take the title down to get your new title. When you take that title to the county tax office, um, that's where you're going to be asked for the check for six and a half percent of the value of the vehicle before they'll give you the new title. Uh, and that's the place that we're most concerned about there being friction with the public. Uh, those are folks who may not be aware of the new law, uh, and they're going to be asked for a sizable check at the time they buy the, uh, or the time they want their new title. And we want to make sure people are prepared and take that check into account when they're making the purchase of their, in that casual sale. So just to be clear, a casual sale is? So a casual sale is really any sale that's not through a dealer that's going to handle the paperwork for you. So your neighbor, your cousin, the person you work with, uh, but anybody who's not through a traditional dealership who, who, who handles the paperwork for you. Okay, so you buy a car, a used car, and you go into the tag office. Um, who determines the value of the vehicle in order to calculate the tax that is due? So uh, it, another great question. Um, the value, what the six and a half percent is, you know, uh, applied to, is a value kept by the Department of Revenue. So it's not what you paid; uh, it's actually a blend of the wholesale and retail value of that car. So sort of like a blue book value of the car, um, and um, that that value is set by the department. It's provided on our website, so you can figure it out by typing in the VIN number of a car, and it'll kick out the value that uh, will be applied or mm -hmm. will be used for that tax. So it is not what you actually paid for the car. It, well, it only is if you got lucky, and what you paid for the car is exactly what uh, the value we keep uh, for that vehicle. And I think that was done for some pretty simple reasons. It was, I think, it was kept from, or was put in place to keep people from gaming the system. So that if I sold a car to you, you know, we could act like I sold it to you for a dollar, uh, and then when you showed up at the county tag office, it was only going to be six and a half percent of the dollar. And I think the legislators, legislators were concerned about that, and so they they set it at, at a value that we set uh, at the department. That value is the same value that we use today to calculate your ad valorem tax. So it's not some crazy different value. It's the same value that's being used today uh, to generate those birthday tax bills. Well, if you don't agree with the valuation that you're given, do you have any options? You sure do. So if you buy a, a car for $1,000 that we value at 10000 because that's the blue book value of the car, the black book value of the car, you have the right to appeal that valuation, uh, just like you would appeal the valuation of any uh, tax in your county. Uh, and your county will have, and Fulton County will have a procedure for doing that. Uh, you probably have to fill out some paperwork and probably have to write a check up front, but then have the ability to appeal that value and, and maybe get some of your money back. Would you have to write the check for the entire amount? Uh, you have to write a check for, uh, uh, I think it's 85% of the, of the amount, uh, okay. of the initial amount, and then, uh, then you can appeal it. Um, I think that's how it's been set up, yes. But you could also split it up into a two-year payment, correct? No, that's o the two years is only for folks who move here oh, from out of state. Okay. So everybody else owes that entire amount up front. The only folks today who have any relief from paying it all up front are, are people who moved to Georgia. Okay, so you can appeal. 
you, um, but you have to pay. But you have to pay. That's right. And that's the, and that's the thing that I, I, if, if people take nothing else from our conversation, the folks who would be most impacted by this are folks who buy in a casual sale um, and not through a dealer. Mm -hmm. And those folks really need to understand how this new law works and that they will be asked for a check for six and a half percent of the value of the vehicle to get that title from the county tag office. And they need to take that, that cost into effect when they're making that purchase. So bottom line, if you are lucky and receive a car as a gift, you still owe the tax. You still owe the tax. Every time, a, every time a car is transferred, a title is transferred in Georgia, that's where the tax is going to apply, uh, and, and you need to take it into account. Okay. Well, okay, so we have this new tax system. The money is going to come in through the counties, but where does the money end up? So, right, so the, the counties will be the place that, uh, that collect all this money, uh, and then the law sets up uh, a system where that revenue is divided into sort of two buckets most or part stays with the county and then the other part goes to the state uh, and the reason it does that is it this is replacing an old system of sales tax and ad valorem tax and sales tax was divided between the state and the local governments and ad valorem was mostly a county tax a little bit went mm -hmm. to the state and so that what they're trying to do with this new revenue or the revenue that replaces that old revenue is is uh, is put it into the same two buckets so part goes to the state and part stays with the counties was there an effort to ensure that the local governments maintain their same level of revenue? Yeah, and, and actually that makes, one of the things that makes our job a little complicated at the Department of Revenue, uh, the law attempts to do exactly that, which is to try to keep the balance between the state portion and the county portion. And so every year we have to run a calculation to see how much revenue actually flowed through the system, where it went, how much the counties kept, how much the states kept, and then the splitting of that revenue in subsequent years uh, changes based on the amount of revenue and how mm -hmm. much each side uh, got to keep and we have to keep a system that accounts for all of that and then and then make that calculation and, and make the changes to the system uh, in subsequent years. So it, may, it actually from just from an internal perspective is a little complicated from a taxpayers perspective you will see none of that. No but it's important to the local governments that actually have to do the work of collecting the taxes um, to understand what it means to their bottom line. Absolutely, absolutely. So we all do, still have services to provide. Yes, yes. Well, you've given us a lot of information. I almost hesitate to ask you, but is there anything else we need to know or our view viewers need to know? No, I think we've covered most of it. Again, I'd recommend people go to the website that we have, uh, newtitletax.com, uh, with any questions uh, that they have um, as they start working through it, uh, and encourage people to get educated. And I would encourage folks to have a little patience when they go to the TAG office. The clerks on the front line have no influence at all to change anything that's in place. Their job is to collect the taxes. That's exactly right. It's a little bit like when you're at the airport and the weather cancels a flight and um, the, um, uh, you know, the person working the, the check-in counter has to tell everybody. There's a limited thing that they can do about it, but, uh, but we would ask for everybody's patience in this. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, Commissioner, thank you so much for coming in. Appreciate your service. Appreciate your interest in Fulton County um, as a resident. Well, as a resident, I'm happy to be here, and I uh, appreciate your service, and thanks for having me on. Well, good luck to you. I know you've got a lot of work to do. Thanks so much. Thank you. And please stay with us for our closing thoughts. We'll be right back. Each year, the Georgia Legislature works through bills that are intended to make our lives better and easier. Unfortunately, sometimes they come in a package that can be very confusing once the law is in place. And that may be the case with this new change. This law not only affects your current vehicle, but it may adjust decisions you make on future vehicle purchases. I hope that this has been a good start to help you understand these changes. We have people and resources in Fulton County to help guide you and answer questions, and I encourage you to take advantage of them. For more information, Fulton County has five full-service tax offices. For your convenience in North Fulton, they are located at the Alpharetta Service Center off North Point Parkway in Alpharetta, 
the North Annex Service Center on Roswell Road in Sandy Springs, as well as the Downtown Government Center. Tax office hours are from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Please call the Fulton County Tax Commissioner's Office at 404-730-6100 or Fulton County Customer Service at 404-612-4000 with any questions. And again, for more detailed information about the title Ad Valorem Tax, you can visit the Georgia Department of Revenue website at www.newtitletax.com. And remember, you can always contact my office at 404-612-8213, reach me via email, Facebook, and Twitter. And well, that's all my time. Thank you so much for yours. Again, I'm Commissioner Liz Hausman, and we'll see you next time on The View from North Fulton.